Searsmont is a small rural town in Midcoast, Maine. Maine is full of really industrious people and it's an asset to have people like that to be able to come into our environment and when they see the level of uh, dedication and care that goes into what we do and how we operate, people really identify that because it's very different from what they've been used to doing in the construction environment. We know how to make better buildings, and in the 70s, uh, some very smart people in North America figured out that if we insulate our buildings better, that if we make them airtight, that if we use a little bit of solar energy in our buildings, and if we orient our buildings properly, that we can make a building that consumes very little energy. EchoCore is a construction firm that designs, manufactures, assembles, and delivers high-performance homes. And we use Passive House, the Global Building Energy Standard, as a baseline for architectural design. Chris is a pioneer. In the past five years, Chris has um, given me and the guys around me an opportunity to really grow and learn a lot more about construction and how we can facilitate um, bringing construction into the 21st century. Chris has taken the Passive House standard and combined it with panelized building and so we construct highly efficient homes in a facility and put it on a truck and ship it to the site and put it together like Legos. I love the factory because of the precision. You're out of the weather, you have more control. The automated part makes it more efficient, for sure. Yeah. Uh, we build them faster because of these high-tech tools and saws that we have. If everything goes as planned, we are going to grow substantially over the next couple of years. Passive House is this great building energy standard that allows us to reduce our consumption in the home. But on top of that, that gives us a baseline on which to create net zero energy buildings or buildings that are actually producing power using solar panels or wind power or any other mechanisms. We realize that making a home is an investment. So to invest in a home that has extremely high levels of insulation, extremely high quality windows, and a fantastic foundation and a fantastic roof, you're then investing in the parts of the home that are the most resilient and will last the longest. And this is just pure building physics. Passive House is, is based on building science, so we know the laws of the universe. We know the laws of thermodynamics. We know that heat moves from warm to cold. We have five principles we use for passive house design. The first thing is solar orientation. And what that means is that we're gonna find the place that we have access to free energy. We like to keep that south side within 20 degrees of, of true solar south. The second thing we do is we use a lot of insulation. We call this super insulation. So insulation that's three or four times more than a typical building. And that's continuous through the whole building. So on the walls, in the ceiling, under the slab, all the way around. The third thing we do is we make a very airtight enclosure. We seal up the building and then we ventilate the building. The fourth thing is we use really, really good windows. These are triple pane windows. Typically in America we're using uh, double pane windows. These are triple pane, so they're much more airtight, uh, better insulation, they're better for solar gain. And the last thing in passive house design is ventilation. So we use a heat exchange ventilator, so we have a very airtight enclosure, and now we use a device to bring in fresh air and exhaust stale air. And those are the five principles of passive house. The house itself doesn't need to breathe, but the people that live inside the house need to breathe. And so we use an HRV or an ERV, a heat recovery ventilator, an energy recovery ventilator, to bring clean, fresh air in from the outside and exhaust stale, moist air from the inside. And as those two streams pass by each other, they exchange heat.
This is Richard Pedranti. He's our architectural partner and a friend and colleague of mine. And so we're here today in Sears Mount to talk a little bit about our construction process and how we bring sort of the design elements and marry that with the fabrication side of things. Earlier this year, we were fortunate enough to partner with EcoCore to develop a line of Passive House uh, model homes to prefabricate here in Sears Mount, Maine, and deliver to uh, North America. So this is the beginning of our production line. We bring the lumber in from outside, from storage. It's maintained in a dry, clean environment. The lumber is racked at the beginning of the production line and then it's put on the saw and processed. This saw is a SP728. Um, we imported this saw from Sweden. It's a multi-axis CNC machine. After the design phase and three-dimensional model and the BIM model is complete, that information gets converted into a BTL or a binary text language. Then that language is sent to the computer on the saw so the computer knows and understands the 6,000 parts that it needs to process uh, to build the home. We take away a lot of the inaccuracies and, and the errors in translating paper documents into cut parts. No longer do we have the issue of communicating how to make these complex details. It's built virtually first, the parts are cut, and then they're assembled by skilled craftsmen. Once the parts are processed, there's little scraps that are then taken care of. So these are the scraps are placed in this bin, and then these scraps are taken out to another place and essentially processed into biomass or used directly into biomass. This bin represents almost half of a house. I mean, typical site build home, you have multiple dumpsters. I mean, two, three, it's a tremendous amount of waste to build a site-built home. So here in the factory, we reduce that uh, waste by, I mean, we're guessing 75, 80%, maybe even more. It's, it's a big reduction of waste, and uh, a lot of the waste is recycled. So once the, uh, once the parts are processed and positioned properly on the racks, all of the parts are labeled so that the Craftsmen can read the label, they know and understand where everything goes and fits on the framing table. So this is where it all starts. Basically the sole plates are laid out and we begin the framing process. The tables expand, they open, they close, they clamp, they square, and they basically operate as a multifunctional 120 foot long jig. The parts are already cut. They're very precisely cut. So it's just a matter of putting these parts together. What it allows is the craftsman to do his job. But the best thing that he's good at is putting parts together. He doesn't have to measure parts, he doesn't have to cut parts. He's just got to assemble these parts. The sheathing in a wall assembly is, is a structural diaphragm. It gives rigidity and torsion strength to a wall. So this tape is part of what I would consider the airtight layer, and it's imperative that that airtight layer be continuous. This is tape, and, and most people just apply this tape. Uh, but EcoCore, they actually snap lines to apply their tape. You can see how precise it is. We have here what is the beginning of the blanket layer, which is the third layer of the wall assembly. Here we have a window buck. We're going to put a large fixed window in this opening, and we're gonna flash it, and we're gonna make it watertight and airtight. We then will begin to apply our eye joists that have been pre-cut for this particular wall assembly. So these tables, the last three tables, are all called uprisers. And this allows us to install windows, to detail the windows from both the outside and the inside, and to gain access, easy access, to both panels and to move them and flip them over safely. So here we have what we call the blanket layer. This is where the blanket layer is filled with 85% recycled insulation in the form of cellulose, dense pack cellulose insulation. It's a recycled material recycled from newsprint traditionally, and it's 100% fireproof, 
It's mold proof and it has the lowest embodied energy of any insulation material on the market. They actually make these cellulose bats for us that are rigid, and this is cellulose insulation. It's clean, it's like a little pillow, you could go to sleep on it. And so this allows us to insulate these very narrow cavities, so when these panels come together and are totally continuous, we ensure the continuity of our thermal layer. We see here what is the fourth layer of the uh, wall assembly, which is the weather resistive barrier. This is a, a truly monolithic fleece. It's waterproof to a, a water column of eight feet. With our two layer rain screen system, it creates a rain screen, a true rain screen, and it also creates a back ventilated facade or a convection plane. It doesn't matter what cladding we put on the wall. It could be wood, it could be metal, it could be fiber cement, but behind that finish is a way to manage the water and moisture vapor. Basically, this is where we install the insulation from, but you can see how dense this material is inside the cavity, like it's, it's not moving. We get this material in, in these bags. Uh, so each one of these bags weighs 26 pounds. So um, we add that all up. This panel it weighs um, approximately 1,000 pounds. Yeah. These are beautifully crafted, triple glazed, windows imported from Europe. Nickel hardware, we rotate the handle 90 degrees, the window opens to the inside. You can just see how robust the construction is, how thick the window frames are compared to our typical windows. And if we close the window and rotate the window 90 degrees, then they tilt as well. This allows the windows to be open in the rain. It allows you to leave the windows open in your house and still have total security. So it also allows you to open the windows to the inside and clean both sides of the glass without having to go outside. One of the things that is so fantastic about RPA and EcoCore's relationship is, is our mutual dedication to using Passive House as a baseline for architectural design and a baseline for construction. And it isn't something that we're aspiring to. This is a, a low energy building standard that is the beginning of the design process and is assumptive from the beginning. So our, our partnership is based on the idea that that's, that's the minimum we're gonna accomplish is Passive House. Everything we're gonna do is Passive House. It's the, it's the best building we can make. By reducing the energy in the built environment by 80 to 90 percent puts us in line to have the capacity in the future to start talking about these paradigms in terms of being able to reduce the propensity for anthropogenic climate change through the built environment.